Okay, today we are going to talk about factoring trinomials by decomposition. That's right, we are going to compost our algebraic expressions, which essentially means to break apart. And that's why we throw things in the compost bin. Hopefully you're doing that, right? And what we're going to focus on is when a quadratic or a trinomial or one of these statements does not have an A of one. So the A is anything other than one. So just to remind ourselves, these are trinomials because there's three terms terms and they typically have this format where we've got a uh, coefficient times an x squared or a variable squared and another coefficient times an x or a variable and then a constant some sort of final value and this is called a trinomial it's called a monic trinomial when the a is a one so that's what we see in this example here which we'll do in a minute and it's non-monic or not monic when it's not a one First, a couple recalls. Let's factor by grouping. Now, if we take a look at this algebraic statement, this first statement can be simplified, I know. I can subtract an eight from a nine, and that would give me a single x. And so realistically speaking, this is six x squared plus x minus 12. But I want to hold on to this, this right here where I've kept it separate. The idea of decomposition or breaking things apart is the fact that I have broken a one x up into nine minus eight. And we've actually purposefully pre-broken that up. So right now what I wanna practice is I wanna practice factor by grouping. So we're going to factor the first two terms on their own, they have a three X in common. So I'm gonna factor out a three X. I will be left with two X plus three. And then in the next two terms, I'll factor them individually, or I guess, well, as a pair, I'm going to factor out a negative four, because that's what they have in common. And don't forget that that means that the signs change on the items as you factor out a negative. And so I end up with two x plus three. And that means I have a two x plus three here, a two x plus three here. So that is common. And so we have two x plus three, and we're left with three x minus four. All right, and that is the factorization of this four term statement, but in fact, it was a trinomial. So what we're going to learn today is how to break up this middle piece so that we can factor by grouping. Uh, if this didn't make any sense to you, then you definitely need to go watch my other videos, which I guess is a good intro. So here I am. Hi, I'm Mr. Brash, and these are my math tutorial videos. This particular one is almost near the end of my factoring section. So you might want to go back and take a look at my previous videos. All right, real quickly, we are going to also practice product and sum. So this is a trinomial, there is no GCF, there is a one for my A value, and so I'm going to find the two numbers or the factors of negative 45 that add to the middle term. They add to four. And I showed this in a previous video as to why we're doing this, so you might wanna check that out. And so, you know, the simple factors like one and 45, you, at some point you have to stop writing these because obviously it's not going to be them. And then by the time you get down to five and nine, you'll realize that five is four away from nine. And so if I subtract five from nine, I'll get four. And if I multiply negative five times nine, I get negative 45. And so that right there, the negative five and the nine, that is the pairing. Those are the two factors of 45 that I'm going to use. And I can simply write m minus five and m plus nine nine, and that's the factorization of this trinomial. All right, enough of the past, let's move to the future. Now, I already defined these, but just in case you're taking notes while you watch this video, which I highly recommend, a monic trinomial has a leading coefficient of one, and a non-monic trinomial has a coefficient that's not a one. And so the first thing you wanna do is definitely look for a GCF. Your life would be so much easier if you could take out a GCF. And in this one, we can, we can take four out of all of these three terms. And I'm left with a monic trinomial when I do that because they all get divided by four nicely. And I end up with a trinomial in the center here that is a monic trinomial, happens to be the one up here and I can factor it using product and sum. So the two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to negative seven are negative three and negative four. And that's the factorization of this seemingly non-monic trinomial. But it's not always that easy. Sometimes it's not a GCF. So sometimes you don't have a GCF. 
So in this case, I have a non-monic trinomial. I don't have a GCF. My A is not a one. I'm going to create a grouping. I am going to decompose. I'm gonna break apart the negative seven into two pieces, just like I can say, okay, 842. 842, I don't know where that number came from. I just kind of picked it out of a hat. That is 800 plus 40 plus two. And so that's the decomposition where I've decomposed 842 this way. Well, this negative seven can come from all sorts of decompositions. It could be negative three plus negative four. What's another one? Negative one plus negative six. It could be positive 10 plus negative 17. There's all sorts of potential situations here. So how do we figure that out? Well, that's where this step-by-step -step process of decomposition comes into place. It's a little bit of memorization, a little bit of a trick, but it works. So the first thing we need to do is we need to multiply the two times the three. And if I multiply two times three, I get six. And so now we're not worried about a negative seven. We're certainly not worried about 842. We're worried about six. I need the factors of six, just like we do in product and sum. Well, the factors of six are one and six and two and three. And just like in product and sum, they have to add to negative seven. So really the only difference between this and product and sum is we're gonna multiply our A times our C. So in this case, I multiplied A times C. So you might wanna write that down. Okay, so the two factors that add to negative seven if I have a negative one and a negative six, they multiply to positive six, they add to negative seven. And so I'm ready to split up that negative seven into negative one x and negative six x. You wouldn't normally write the one, I did that just for show. And now I will factor by grouping. So I'm going to take an x out of the first two terms. I'll be left with two x minus one. And I'll factor out a negative three out of these two terms, and I'll be left with 2x minus 1. So I have a 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1, that's a commonality, a common factor. I'm left with x minus 3. And so now I have the factorization of this trinomial. As with any videos when you're learning on your own, it is recommended that you pause the video and try things out and then see where your mistakes are or if you actually do understand it. So why don't you try these two right here? In the first case, we don't have a common factor. There's no GCF. We're gonna go straight into what I just showed you. We are gonna multiply three times negative 12. So three times negative 12 is negative 36. I need the factors of 36 that are going to help me create a five. I need to add to five. And I'm all, I feel like I'm almost there, right? Because you can sort of see it happening. 36, four and nine, four and nine multiply to make 36 and they add to make five. And how do I get a positive five? Well, the four has to be negative. So we're going to decompose or break apart my positive five into a negative four and a positive nine. And then I'm gonna factor by grouping. You, the way that you write these two, I mean, I could have written the positive nine Z here and the negative four Z here to, to maybe put some factors next to each other that uh, resemble each other, resemble themselves. Uh, the order that you write those factors doesn't really matter. I'm going to leave it like this though, and I'm just gonna factor out a Z and I'm left with, oh, I forgot the squared, look at this. Don't forget your squareds. So I'm gonna factor out my Z and I'll be left with three Z minus four. And then I'm gonna factor a three out of here and I'll be left with three Z minus four. And that's a Z, not an eight. So I've got three Z minus four is my common factor between these two. And I'm left with Z plus three. And that's the factorization of this trinomial. Good thing I caught my mistake there, didn't copy down the square. That's actually a pretty common error. All right, let's move on to the last example for my video here. And of course, there's tons of other videos online. I highly recommend Khan Academy and all of the other regular videos. We're gonna take a look for a GCF first. You always want to do that. Do you see a GCF? Because I do, it's 6R. And so I'm gonna factor out a 6R and I'll be left with 3R squared plus r minus two. 
This leaves me with a trinomial in the middle. I need to keep going. Don't stop at just the GCF. Now, sometimes this is not factorable. That's, that's true. And we would just say, okay, this is it. This is the factorization of it. And you'll learn something later called the quadratic formula that lets you continue. But in this case, I can continue. And my goodness, I have another typo. That should be squared. Here we go. I'm full of mistakes today. Okay, so I'm gonna factor this trinomial now using decomposition because the a value is not a one. And so I'm gonna multiply three times negative two. Three times two is negative six. I need the factors of negative six that add to my new b value, which is a one. That's the two and the three. The two has to be negative. And so I end up over here. I'm going to split up my one r into negative two r plus three r. And then I still have that negative two here. So just gonna give a little bit of visualization as to what just occurred. All right, so this one R got split up. And now we're going to take a look at the inside, inside this bracket, these first two terms. These first two terms can be factored by taking an R out, and I'll have three R minus two. And here, I don't have anything in common. So what do you do when you have nothing in common? Well, in fact, you can factor out a single one because one times three R and one times negative two still is a thing, it still works. So I'll factor out a one. That leaves me with three R minus two, unsurprisingly. And now three R minus two is common between those two. So three R minus two is what I can factor out. And I'm left with R plus one. This particular example is tricky. This is sort of what I might call my level four plus example or question. And now I have the factorization of this trinomial. So let's just break it down again. I GCF'd, I factored out a six R. That left me with a trinomial that I'm gonna focus on myself. So you'll notice the six R just kind of stayed the entire way. I could not use product and sum because my A value is a three. So I had to break the one up into a negative two and a three I multiplied three times two in order to do that and figure out what that factorization is, broke the one up, and then I factored the left-hand side. And the right-hand side wasn't really factorable, but I can take a one out. I can, and it's funny to say take a one out. It's not actually coming out of anything. It's just that one times anything is itself. And then I have a three R minus two in both cases here, which is common. Okay, now I could give more and more examples, but ultimately there's tons of them online. I think you should definitely practice this skill. There are other ways to factor non-monic trinomials as well. There's a few different ways to do it, but this is the way that I like to do it, and this is the way that I teach. By all means, leave questions or comments down in the comment section, and keep practicing math.